Yay. Hey, everybody. It's Tuesday, July 16th. You're here at the Chaos D, not DEI. This is not DEI. This is the Chaos Weekly Community Call. <sighs> I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, glad to see everybody. Welcome back to Vinod. After being gone all summer, we're happy to see you again. Glad you made it home. Let me share my screen. And Sean has thunder. So if he loses power, we'll know why. Yeah. You could just use that as an excuse, Sean, if you just want to peace out for the day, just be like, oh, no, it was the storm. I, I believe everything is on battery backup, so I should have at least 15 minutes after I lose power. Okay, well, you know. But that belief has been proven false before, so I guess we'll see. I'm trying to give you an out, Sean. All it takes <laughs> is one network device not plugged into a UPS. <laughs> there you go, that, right? That's how you test your infrastructure right there. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, I am so happy that I'm not the only one that is a one, a low, no, I can't do the spice, especially as I get old, I just can't do it. I can't do it. I never could, but it's even worse now. I get, like, it will stick with me a lot longer. Yeah, it's not good. But I see Dawn is an eight, so I'm very impressed with that. We got some sevens, yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of, we do a lot of spicy food. Yeah. I, I will say this. The scales are super different for Mexican food and Thai food. Like it might be the same numbers, but Thai food seems to get way hotter, way faster. Agreed. Agreed. I just had some Thai food a couple days ago and I asked for a one and <laughs> wow. I'm like, okay, let's do it. Yeah, it was definitely different. Um, Don, I'm really uh, surprised too. Also growing up in Ohio, like mid America, you know, Yes, here's the thing. I didn't think I liked spicy food until I moved to Portland and we had Thai restaurants. And like you said, the the mild is still a little spicy. Right. And I started getting used to it. Like, so here's the, the pro tip for going to Thai restaurants. Tell them you want children's spicy. <laughs> children's. No, no spice at all. Yeah. Children. Otherwise you, get, you get some spicy. And I got used to it and I started making more spicy and children spicy i'm actually writing this down don because that's a, a fantastic life tip i <laughs> love it i didn't know that was a thing so i will be happy to be on the child's menu that yes i'm, I'm there <laughs> uh okay let's jump into the agenda because we have a couple of things on here first off the communications team we're still trying to figure out what we're doing that's okay we're evolving as we go um it's pretty new it's the reboot is new, I should say. So we have this form, it's in Slack. Uh, I'm not gonna click on it because it'll push me to Slack and who knows what's going on over there. Um, but if you click on that when you're in Slack, there will be a form that pops up and um, you can tell us what you would like us to help you with, whether it be um, blog posts to go on the Chaos blog, whether it's something coming up and you want us to help uh, you know, amplify your message, other Chaos news you'd like to share. Um, and the reason for doing this is a couple, there are a couple reasons. One is so that we have a spreadsheet, all this stuff goes into a spreadsheet. We have a spreadsheet of things that are going on so that we can coordinate with other things if possible, and also make sure we're not missing things. Um, because I know we've tried in the past, especially with the conference talks, to keep a list of like who's speaking where and on what about chaos. and. We have not done a great job. <laughs> We've not done a great job of keeping that updated, nor have we done a great job of really promoting mindfully some conference talks that are coming up. So um, we would like to be better at that. So there you go. We're gonna try it. If it becomes annoying, uh, I don't. I don't know. Maybe we'll change it. But um, hopefully, it's not gonna fall into the general channel. It should just come into the comms channel when we get a new submission. So uh, if you're in that channel and it becomes too um, noisy, we can, we'll, we'll talk about that. But there you go. Questions, um, comments, something, anything on that? I have a comment. Are you on that group, Elizabeth? Yes. So what, do you know like what you're trying to accomplish <laughs> in that group? Like, is it to get people to use chaos metrics is it get them to get them to join like our meetings um 
to promote the good work, you know, like all, whatever, or all of them? Yes, all of them. So what we focus on, what we've been talking about focusing on is, um, so if you look at the um, graphic from the board goals, those six goals, we focus on goals two and three, which is growing the user community, growing the um, contributor community, essentially. So we're looking at ways to help promote things like Dawn's practitioner guides, but also things like um, Peculiar's education courses and how people can get involved from a contributor standpoint. So it's where those are the two things that we focus on. And like right now, there's no real concerted effort or coordinated effort, um, or I should say before the communications team, because that's what we're working on, um, to, to piggyback things with other things, um, to have a, a like a roadmap of what's coming up in the future, what we can post about leading up to that thing. So like when we have chaos con, we can like in the in the spring or, or winter, I guess we we can focus a little more on like, what are we going to do with chaos con? OK, here's some blog posts leading up to that or just be a little more coordinated with it all. Um, I think the other thing, too, is just that there's so much going on at chaos that it's just impossible for one person, i.e. me, <laughs> to know what's going on. So um, I don't want to miss things, you know, and I feel like right now there are things that are falling through the cracks that we're not doing a great job of promoting or even um talking about like in this in this call even you know so um that's another uh reason for it there are like there are things that can go in the newsletter that i i don't hear about and so another you know just another way to communicate to the community does that make sense yeah it does and i agree with you there's just so much going on like mm, like i wonder if it's a good idea maybe for the like to just focus on a piece of the pie for a while instead of all the things I, I have no idea I, I have no idea how to do communications <laughs> and so uh, yeah I mean that's fair uh, we have like um, Nicole's in that group as well um, that has a lot of experience with the, this kind of thing Alice is in that group as well um, Aluchi's in that group who's been doing a lot of the social media for Chaos Africa. Uh -huh. So um, we have folks that know what they're doing. <laughs> Not me, but yeah. I am in that group to just be in there with them. So um, yeah, I, and you know, it is unfolding. So okay. we're just kind of sh shooting for the moon now, I think. Don, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, most, most open source projects that I work in have some way of um, some organized way of doing social media promotions in particular, because right now, if I, if there's, you know, if we do, if I do uh, like a podcast on sustain, I don't even know who to talk to, to like get that retweeted or reposted from the chaos social media channels. And this gives us, this gives us a place for people to put that because I suspect some people are pinging Elizabeth. Some people are pinging other people. Some people are just putting it in random places. And this gives us, at least on the social media side, kind of a coordinated way for for people, like one place for people to say, hey, can you promote this thing that, that we just did? I think that's good. And then maybe just focusing, it sounds like just focus on the process to get that done. Because I know that, for example, listening to what you were saying, Don, like we have reached out to the LF before to say can you put this on your socials and we know who to reach out to just to try to improve reach um and so maybe it's like we've been pretty inconsistent over the many years on communication like it's just been something that's been hard to sort out so maybe it's just kind of focusing on building that consistency in that process that you were referring to don like here's how if you're a person involved in chaos you can lean into the communication channels of chaos to get the word out i i don't i'm not really sure but it just seems like if you're going to do all the things like it like it's just so much to do but i'm just thinking like right now if you look at our social channels like we we really don't promote most of the stuff that we do um, and I suspect it's because nobody knows where to go to, to say, Hey, we just released a thing or we just, you know, we just did something. Um, and so I feel like a process where we can get that, 
better better organized or people at least know where to put that stuff i think might okay. help okay do you think that that process like could include like let's say i was doing a talk you know what i mean and i wanted to promote that talk um and then would the process i haven't looked at it but would the process include like me writing a small bit of language that could go into the post or would i just say here's the link to my talk you know, you communication team figure it out from this point forward? I think that's a great question. Um, I don't know the answer to that right now. The form just has a place for you to provide a link. And the thought was, um, I guess we would, the communications team would just write like a sentence or two. Hey, if you're at this conference, check out this talk on chaos by whoever, um, just to spread the word. So it, I don't think it has to be super heavy weight. I think it can be pretty lightweight. Um, it, the, the goal really is just to share um, okay. and help promote people. So maybe I'm literally, uh, I just want to head down. So do we have a form to fill out to communicate, uh, like uh, share the information with the communication team? Yep, oh. right here in, this, um, in the agenda, there's a link, but you have to be in Slack. It's all through oh. Slack. So um, it'll be a Slack workflow which I'm super proud of that I figured it out. So <laughs> how, uh, <laughs> There's a template, yes. so I just <laughs> changed the template. But, um, but yeah, and then also I think it helps us see it all in a spreadsheet. And we can also balance out and spread things out a little better, I think, too. Um, like That's like a second tier thing, I think, because we don't have that problem really. But if we have a bunch of things, then they could, might all go out at once. And then that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to be a little bit more of a drip, you know, and like share things a lot, but uh, not at once. So that will just, help us spread things out. Just my suggestion, I don't know, uh, I'm not in the part of communication team, but uh, just a suggestion, how about we keep a, a issue kind of a mechanism that we have on the GitHub. If I want uh, something to be posted on social media, I create an issue on GitHub that issue is resolved by the communication team and then the entire history will live there forever uh, if you want to track it back. So whenever somebody wants, we have a dedicated guideline that if you want to post something on a social media for the for, uh, we, uh, anyone who can create an issue, that issue is addressed by the communication team. In this way, everyone knows what is being posted. The form is, I don't know what is in the form, but I can see the issue, anyone can see the issue whether that has been addressed and then communication team can post it. Just a suggestion for the, as yeah, an option. We can, yeah, we can definitely talk about that. We have, our next meeting is on July 26th. So also if anyone um, has communication experience or wants to be on that team, feel free to join us. It's on the chaos calendar as well. Oops. Oh, do you see that link now in the, general channel yeah and so the link that you put in the minutes that doesn't work because it tells me that it can't open up a thing a slack thing okay well okay yeah. sorry everybody Elizabeth, i have some yeah. suggestion i may not be uh, available to attend the communication meeting there i just think the communication theme will be quite impactful and it's a great place of putting people in perspective who are also not just the external people, but among us as well. So you were talking about keeping track of conferences and things like that. I think they can also have a liaison with the scientific or the research people. All the technical talks, all the talks that have gone, they could make a good summary, like a, a short blog post. Let's say annually, or it could happen after every six months just to see in the year in perspective, what has happened within the chaos community, just to, you know, give the key points and the key takeaway messages. That's very impactful. So people could now look at that summary text to see, okay, it might be this particular set of metrics were mostly covered in this area and this focus we're giving to this direction. So people who are coming up with different talks and then later future can look into that summary and vividly and they can capture a lot more of things that have happened yeah and these kind of things i mean it will work with uh, it also have to keep 
uh, links with talks that have been given, contribution that people have made. Some might even be like the keynotes and any other things that have happened in the umbrella of chaos. So if this kind of blog post from the communication team can go quarterly, depending on how you guys arrange to make it, but it really gives a lot of impact. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Armstrong, I appreciate that. I will definitely bring that up in the next communications meeting for sure. I mean, I could, I'm sorry to keep talking about this, but- No, it's fine. Um, listening to Armstrong talk, I could see like adding this to say the university working group meeting like once a month that at the end of a meeting or at the start of a meeting we just take a second and fill it out i do wonder if would it make sense to say for example um you know we're working on a book chapter <laughs> it's not done feel free to join us <laughs> you know or do you only want finished products like i have a talk or you know we did this thing and it's over i think it's designed for any anything you want to share with the community so it could be if you're looking for volunteers or we just want to update the community on something like right oh. now the only place that that happens really is here maybe in the weekly newsletter if i get it in there mm -hmm. uh, but if you it, it just makes it a lot easier for us to help you share the news if we know about it. So instead of a, a poll where I'm trying to pull information from people, yeah. it's a push. So you push to me what you want us to talk about publicly, either here, open, like, here these meetings. Yeah. With open-ended stuff. Like here's yeah. what we're working on. Yeah. Please, if you have an interest, join us. Yes, yes. Okay. Like something like that would never right now go on LinkedIn, but it could, right? Like that's a place where we could talk about what we're working on and we don't at all right and i'd say like we have a, we're having a challenge kind of building the use case in this chapter and any thoughts on how to do that would be appreciated yes totally okay. totally agree totally agree okay and we do have a um an open slack channel it's wg-coms I can put it in here. So if people have suggestions or, or questions on, you know, anything, just pop in there and ask us. We're nice, I promise. <laughs> I might recommend putting it, can you pin, I don't know how easy it is to pin this workflow to say like the OSPO working group or the science research or the university, you know, in Slack at the top, just so it's really easy to get access to it. I'm I got you. So, so pin it as like a bookmark on the top of those Slack channels. Mm. That's oh. good. But okay. And you know, I think too, um, just reminding the because I feel like a lot of these things are going to come from chairs and co chairs of those meetings people who are facilitating I feel like they would be the ones that would identify something big that maybe the group's working on or even a need. Um, not it doesn't have to be but. Um, you know kind of a, a circle back to the uh, conversation we had last week about coordinating co chairs and chairs and leaders in chaos more like maybe that would be something also that would be in that, you know? I don't know, that's an aside for sure. Uh, we can move on though. Do we have final, just one final, any final thoughts, anything? And again, just a reminder, it's all an experiment. So we don't, we don't know, maybe it will be too overwhelming for, for the communications team. I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay, the next one I put on here in case Emma was able to attend and I don't see her. Um, but if anybody so she was asking me if so Emma and Justin wrote this article, which we can go here and read about which is super interesting if you haven't read this it is pretty interesting. Um, they're talking about this and they also mentioned chaos so yay. Thank you, Emma and Justin. 
they're talking about this funding.yml file, which um, helps a an open source project communicate about how they can get funded. Uh, so if you want to learn more about that, you can click on here. But what she was asking specifically about is, are we talking about that anywhere in chaos? And also um, this bit, it doesn't really talk about the progress that's being made based on the funding that the project has gotten. So people are kind of using that file as a, as a first step to communicate how to send money to our project, but it doesn't really communicate back. Here's how the money was used. Here's what we've done, whatever else. So those who are funding projects don't have any insight into, it. are we making a difference? Is this being helpful to this project? Or are they just, did they all go buy Corvettes? Like, we don't know. So, <laughs> so I'm, my question then to the community is, do you all know if anybody's talking about this? Is this something that we think would be a topic of interest for a working group at Chaos or maybe here? I don't know. I'm just putting it on the agenda. I will say that we talked about that article that you've linked in the OSPO working group meeting. I think probably the, the last ones, maybe last last week. Um, I brought it up just because I found the article really interesting. Unfortunately, Emma and Justin weren't, weren't at the OSPO working group meeting either. Um, it's hard to get attendance at some of these uh, meetings during the summer. But um, I don't know that if we've talked about the funding.yaml in any of the meetings, um, but it seems like you know, this is a pretty hot topic for OSPOs. So I would say that if we if we wanted to fit it into an existing working group, I would say it probably fits best in the OSPO working group. I don't know if other people think differently. What's the hot topic from an OSPO perspective? Is it like to provide funding or is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Figuring out ways that they are allowed to provide funding for projects. Okay. That's something that a lot of them struggle with. It's something that, uh, Dwayne O'Brien was was championing for a while, um, even even all the way back when he was at Indeed. He had a group of of people. Most of them were leaders of various OSPOs getting together to talk about best practices for providing funding for projects because it's it's hard, right? Like um, companies have lots of restrictions about how they're allowed to give money to people, and how do you how do you evaluate the projects? How do you decide? How do you select them? So there's all there are all of these discussions that um, I think still happen in that group that Dwayne runs about about funding. But it might be interesting to dig into some of the metrics in particular um, that might be might be good. I do remember that too, Don. I remember um, as an aside, I think DEI was actually part of that conversation of wanting to give to projects that are working actively in DEI and. Um, you know, making sure that they're supporting those types of projects. So I think there are several metrics that could maybe go into a a funding discussion, metrics models, maybe something. I don't know. Yeah, I just dropped the um, into chat. Ooh, nice. Looks like it's kind of connected into the to do group. Nice. <laughs> Make it weird not to fund. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah, nice. Okay. Cool. I will make sure it look. Did I see Microsoft on here? Yeah. Emma probably knows about this already. I will definitely point her to that. Yeah, I think she's. I think she's been intimately involved in that for okay. a while. Perfect. Okay. As a project, should we be thinking about like reading that report? I see the report kind of clicking through and like um, positioning our funding document to like <laughs> receive that funding. I mean, it sounds like that companies are trying to figure out ways to most effectively provide funding. And it seems like it would make sense for us to try to position ourselves to receive that funding, <laughs> like that those should be aligned. Um, I guess I have to read the report as to how, how they can actually give money. I've never so, yeah, so so Microsoft gives it through um, uh, GitHub sponsors. And that article details exactly why 
And the primary reason they will only do it through GitHub sponsors, or not only probably, but for the most part, most of it goes through GitHub sponsors because then they can cut one check to this program and GitHub distributes it um, as they specified. So it makes it a lot easier from a company perspective because you've got one check, one invoice, one thing to GitHub, and then you tell GitHub where to send it all, and then GitHub handles the okay. logistics. Okay. Whereas a big company typically wouldn't be able to sponsor, you know, Joe Maintainer to maintain whatever. So I really do think we we need to get ourselves set up as uh, on GitHub sponsors, okay. which we can connect it to our Open Collective account. I I looked into it a little bit, but. Gotcha. But just listed there at least as a project. Okay. Yeah. Well, it involves a pile of paperwork because there's like tax paperwork. There's you connect it to an open collective account. It has to be somebody on our funding team for the chaos project. Our, uh, I forget what we call it, finance committee who does it because the paperwork involved. Okay. I can take a look at that. Okay. And start yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, that article is super interesting. So if you haven't read that related article that Elizabeth has linked, it's, it's worth a read. Okay, any other comments, questions, discussion before we go on? All right. Next one on the list is uh, we are participating in the um, Grace Hopper Conference virtual uh, workshop on open source day, which is happening October 4th uh, from 12 to 6 Eastern, which I am fully aware is not great for our European friends. Sorry about that. Um, that is a is already set up from uh, Grace Hopper folks, so we don't really have control over that. Uh, run of show is here. And as you can see, we have space for more volunteers. We're going to do some, some uh, virtual talks and then um, some breakout sessions for Augur and More Lab. Uh, we have room. So if you, if this is something you want to be, be involved in, help us with, help us make sure everybody gets to where they are, help people answer or help answer questions for folks who are new to chaos and trying to um, work through these activities. Um, add your name and your email. What is run of show? That's their. That's what they call yeah, the. Sure. Yeah. What? That's what they call the schedule. Just that this is our schedule. Okay. Yeah, that's just what they call it. So. It's very Hollywood. Yeah. Showtime. Okay. And then we as a, I should also add, we as a chaos group will probably, well, we definitely will connect with each other. There's a Slack channel uh, where we can connect with each other and coordinate who's doing what and where we need help, um, various places. So, but for now, if you want to be involved, just add your name and then we're going to sort it out later because we have a little bit of time. And we'll add you to that. We'll make sure you're in that Slack channel as well. Questions or comments on that? Okay. I uh, wanted to make sure everybody knew that there is a new chaos cast out there about the Contributor Sustainability Practitioner Guide. Don, myself, and Alice had a fantastic time chatting with each other about this. So um, yeah, you should go listen. I mean, not right this second, because you're here, but when this meeting is over, you should do that. Because it was a lot of fun. Um, can somebody drop this? Actually, I can drop this in here for him. So. Oh, thanks, Don. All right. And then so that's that. That's just kind of an announcement. Not that much to talk about, but we can if you want one. <clears throat> this um, is 
uh, from Chaos Asia. They are building a database of open source communities. Um, so if you know of any, there's an issue here where you can put some information such as this right here. Um, just add it as a comment, just like that person did. I imagine we'll be doing something similar for Latin America and the Balkans, but I've not seen that come through yet. So maybe this is a, a test and experiment. And if this works, then maybe they can use that framework. Take it from there. Pretty straightforward, but if anybody has questions or you, I think you probably well, no, they probably uh, would rather have it in the issue because I'm ge I'm guessing since they were kind of strict about the format, they're probably going to automate this somehow. Um, but if you do have questions on it, if you're not sure if something counts, for instance, um, you can ask them in the channel Slack channel. Comments, anybody? Alrighty. Next one is Georg. Do you want to talk about this? Yes, I do. I also want to circle back real quick on the GitHub sponsors. I filled out the form and we are pending approval. And so once GitHub approves it, the GitHub organization is set up with an email address, admin at the Linux foundation.com. So if that is, um, if they have questions for us, I will not see that. Does anyone, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll cross our fingers, hope it just gets approved and I don't have to do anything else. Yeah. Uh, otherwise we'll have to ask the Linux Foundation to forward those emails. All right, that was the update on GitHub sponsors. Going back to the topic of detecting SPDX files. This comes out of our collaboration with Sonatype on the software supply chain report that Don and I are active in the risk section. And one of the one of the things that we are looking at is how are projects that publish an SBOM, is there a difference to those that don't publish an SBOM? And for that we want to detect that an SBOM is published and the we are having trouble identifying SPDX files. So the question is, has anyone looked at it or uh, knows how to do this? Because right now, and this is mostly Maven data that they've looked at, Cyclone um, files have been identified and there's only one SPDX file that has been identified in releases. So I'm just going to post the question here if anyone has experience measuring or identifying SBOMs as SPDX files. Um, I would, my experience is SPDX is if there's file level license declarations, then those are something that you can scan for. I haven't seen SPDX active projects, you know, the ones that put the license headers at the top of the files, publish the SBOM in the repository, but I might, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying I've looked at everything. I, I just have actually never seen that. Right, and we're, look, we're not looking for the license declaration Right. The files, we're looking for the files specifically with releases. So as you get a binary or something that you get the SBOM along with it. Yeah, I don't know. I would, I would maybe ask the SPDX community if that's actually the practice that they intend. Because like I'm saying, I haven't seen the practice of publishing an SBOM with SPDX licensing header data. So like the use of SPDX is uh, visible through those license headers. And I just, I haven't seen projects publishing the SBOM in the release. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but I actually haven't seen it. 
So, so this is be. something that the projects are going to have to start to do um, mm -hmm. because of regulations, both in the U.S. and in the EU, around having an S bomb. So I it's so I I agree. It's something we haven't seen historically. It's um, but it's something that people are going to have to start to do, and so we're trying to figure out how they're starting to do that. Yeah, I would, um, I would reach out to the SPDX community and see what they intend. Yeah, Kate might have some insight on this. So, so when I was or Shane, Shane Cock Cock Conklin. Yeah, we not go ahead. Yeah, when I was working with the AGL folks, uh, they do uh, have a documentation on highlighting the licenses as per as bomb policy. So I don't remember the exact link because when I was revamping their documentation, this came across and we had a discussion. So they do publish uh, SPDX like licenses so in their releases. So maybe take a look at the AGL documentation or site for that, or I can look at it and point out the things. All right, I'll reach out to Kate, because right now the data and Sonatype is happy to share that with anyone interested. Um, we're not finding the SPDX file format. Other file formats for SBOMs, yes, but so the question is, are we looking the wrong way? All right, that's all. Thank you. Thanks, Georg. Uh, next one on the list is, I'm guessing this was you, Sean? Yeah, I just wanted to, last meeting we discussed the uh, sort of, um, uh, I don't know, cyclical or um, the uptake of these uh, these community contributions edits. And so I went back to some notes that a GitHuber had provided me when I had a conversation with them about this. And I created just a demo of um, how to do it. And I just need a few people, like I think this might work. So if you create an issue in this repository, so this is just a test, but it's using the same file that's in our repository. I just didn't want to wreck anything. So if you click new issue, there's a template and you click that template that's for a contribution. You just give it a name and then it asks for this data. You know, these are the pieces of data in that table. So if you just kind of, I don't know, just if you don't mind filling in something <laughs> facilitated like a boss exactly. And then, like, I could provide the full list of stuff of categories. I know there's like a whole list in the in the file itself. Uh, if you submit that issue, so now if you go to the, go back to the root of the repository, which repository? Uh, Just chaos right. action bot. Yeah, okay. yeah, there you go. And if you click community, oops, community, so community contributions, it might take a minute to update. Click refresh, do you mind? All right. Yeah, there you go. Click community contributions oh. now. So if we go to the bottom and it's working, so yeah, it just adds the row automatically through an issue. Yeah. And then does Elizabeth get credit for that on her GitHub profile? So that's okay. Uh, that's a piece of I don't know. Uh, how does that how does that happen ordinarily? It's magic. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I haven't done the. I didn't. <laughs> well, I, click, I, on I Elizabeth, no click on your profile. We can just we can just see real quick. Your profile. Oh yeah, there you go. Opened an issue yeah. in a repository. Woohoo! Got that green square right here, baby. Yep. <laughs> this makes me feel old, by the way. I'm just saying. Oh. Yeah, I'm a youngster. Mine starts in 2010. <laughs> Sean, this is wonderful. Thank you very much for the, for doing that. That's a fantastic thing. Uh, we will change so, it. So if everyone's good with it, then I can I can do a pull request 
like I'll just create like basically everything I did is just I can port it very easily over to the, our repo. I just didn't want to test against the real thing. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Then I'll get double credit. So even better. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll do a PR for that this week. Is there yeah, thanks a lot anything in I don't think there is, but um, is there anything in um, like the issue if you go back to it, Elizabeth, like you're going to open an issue? new issue oh then we would need to go back and close that right i guess yeah i can so that i think was a question that i put in slack should i should we automate the closing of the issue because i think that would not be hard i so, feel like yes go ahead matt sorry yeah so any of none nothing in an issue can be like widgeted can it like date completed always has to be just manually typed there's no there, like you know, there, there might be a way to widget date because um, I'm using variables for dates on other parts of this when I execute the action. Yeah. But the, the reason I didn't automate the date is is because I think people probably won't always do this the day that they submit the issue. No, but you can give them a can you give them a date picker? I oh, think I, was I don't know. I can look. I haven't. I didn't, if you look at the issue templates that I've done for um, for the data science working group, yeah, those are actually those are issue templates that are YAML, and so they have things like drop downs. I didn't look at a date picker because that wasn't important to me, but mine have like drop downs. So you could have a specify the project area as like a drop down to pick something. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that okay. might make it easier for people. Type of contribution. I mean, any of those, if they were all drop downs, that'd be cool. Oh yeah, that's, I'll look, I'll look at yours. What repo is that in, Don? What repo are those in? The uh, data, data science. I'll, w, I'll grab a link and send it. Uh, uh, WG data science, right? Yeah, I'll send you a link to the issue templates. All right, oh, yeah. Handy. That's great, that's great. I didn't, I didn't know you could do that, honestly. Yeah, I didn't either until I saw a colleague of mine do it in one of our CNCF repositories. I was like, oh my God, how did that work? I, I'm going to do that. And I talked to him when I did these. Okay, I'll um, I'll add that. That should be pretty easy once I see your examples. Um, and then I'll, I'll probably just include a link to this repository and the updates I do so you can, so whoever runs the PR can make sure it works the way they want it to before you merge it. Last thing I want to do is create an automated markdown scrambler by mistake. <laughs> well, thank you, Sean, for doing that. That's great. That will make things a whole lot easier. So we'll change this reminder next time. Yeah, let's get it implemented. But yeah, okay, great. One of the side effects of this bot is that we have a lot of issues that are closed in a very short amount of time. So our time to close issues is going to look fantastic. <laughs> I love it. I love to skew the numbers, <laughs> especially from, from metrics uh, org. Yes. Uh, any final things? We have three minutes. Here's some reminders. Um, some open CFPs. Thank you, Don, for putting those on there. And also a reminder, if you have ideas or feedback for the podcast crew, send them here. I think that's all the, yeah. Any other reminders, any final thoughts? Two minutes left. All right. Well, I'll take my two minutes back. Yeah. <laughs> Hope everybody has a great rest of your week and we will see you here next week or maybe tomorrow. See you later, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye.